How's it going guys, Jacob from Easy PC here, and today we're going to be talking about the best $400 gaming PC in March of 2020, but this gaming PC will be viable for months to come. All the parts mentioned in this video can be found down below in the description, as well as a link to PC Part Picker where you can see this build from a bird's eye view. And lastly, if you want to check out the full build guide, I'm going to have that listed link down below, where you can check out my website, we've got a full write up there as well. So before we talk about the parts, I do want to mention quickly some things about the build that were kind of hard. So obviously number one was the budget. You know, sticking to a strict budget of $400 was pretty tough. And originally in my last build, I had a Ryzen 3 1200, a pretty cheap CPU paired with an RX 570. Again, a really, really good budget graphics card. However, we were still going over the $400 budget just a bit. And uh, I decided to get rid of the graphics card altogether and replace it with a really capable APU, which we're gonna get to in a second, because APUs have come a, quite a long way. So that was one of the issues that we had, but we did manage to fit all the parts in this build. And actually this gaming PC is under $400. So we had to make some compromises. And if you can save up a few hundred extra dollars to get a $500 or a $600 gaming PC, you'll be able to fit a dedicated graphics card. But if $400 is all that you have, you're gonna get a gaming PC that can play new titles, especially esports titles like CSGO, Fortnite, Dota, League of Legends, and Overwatch. You're gonna, you're gonna be able to play games like that with uh, pretty buttery smooth frame rates at medium settings in 1080p, which considering you're only spending 400 bucks and you don't need a graphics card for this build, it's pretty impressive. So without further ado, we're gonna hop right into the build. Starting out with the CPU, I went for the AMD Ryzen 3 3200G. Now, a few things about this processor. Number one, it is more than a processor. It is actually an APU. And for those of you who do not know what an APU is, it's basically a processor with a graphics card built in. The CPU has Radeon Vega 8 graphics built in, meaning you do not need a graphics card. In fact, you can plug your HDMI cable straight into your motherboard and into your, mo uh, your monitor, and the CPU will do all of the graphics processing for you, which is gonna save a lot of money because you don't need to buy a dedicated graphics card. That's why I chose this processor. It's a great bang for your PC gaming buck, and you're not gonna find a better APU elsewhere. And by the way, it does come with a really capable stock cooler, so you do not need to worry about an aftermarket cooling solution. For the motherboard, I chose the Gigabyte B450M DS3H Micro ATX AM4 motherboard. It's the same motherboard I used in my last build because it, I mean, it gets the job done. It's cheap, it's effective, it's got four DIMM slots, which can support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz memory. It is crossfire capable, so if you do want to add a GPU or two down the line, you'll be able to do that despite being Micro ATX, so that is pretty feature proof. It has four SATA 6 gigabyte per second ports and an M.2 slot, as well as onboard video compatibility with onboard USB 3 headers. Overall, pretty solid motherboard, and for a beginner builder, a micro ATX board is perfect. Moving on to the RAM, we did go for a crap load of RAM here. We went for a 16 gigabyte kit. It's two sticks of eight gigabytes from G-Skill. We went for the G-Skill Reptiles 5 series. This is DDR4 3000 memory, so pretty fast. You're getting a lot of RAM. You're getting it in a dual channel configuration, and it is also 3000 megahertz memory. So the reason why we went for so much RAM in this build is because yes, while well, eight gigabytes of RAM would be sufficient, in terms of future proofing, having more RAM is always better. A lot of games now are requiring more RAM. It's also gonna be good for workstation tasks as well. The main reason why we chose to opt for this kind of RAM is because when you think about it, a lot of graphics cards have dedicated VRAM that they can use to process textures and stuff like that, right? A lot of cards have two, three, four, six, eight gigabytes of VRAM. Unfortunately, the APU has a lot less, almost none compared to a dedicated graphics card, meaning if you want your APU, the, the Ryzen 3 3200G, to perform up to snuff, you have to give it enough RAM. So having this much RAM is going to have a big impact. A lot of Ryzen CPUs heavily depend on RAM, and this is ever more the case with the Ryzen 3 2200G, simply because it is an APU and it needs a lot of RAM. Moving on to the storage, some of you guys are gonna hate me for this. You can let me know down in the comments what you think is better. I'd love to have a discussion with you. But I chose the Western Digital Blue SN550 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe solid state drive. Here's why. You could go for a one or two terabyte mechanical drive and have way more storage twice or four times as much. However, 
you are going to be loading at half the speed, right? And nobody likes taking a long time to load. With a mechanical hard drive, your PC will take several minutes to boot up, not to mention the time you have to wait for it to actually warm up. You know, when it, once your, all your programs are loading and your PC is still kind of slow, that's a pain in the ass. And having your games all on a mechanical drive are going to slow it down even further. It's going to take you forever to load in the games. Nobody likes that. And it's just way better to have an SSD. You're also not going to have random slowdowns. I used to experience that all the time when my operating system was and my games were all on the same hard drive, a mechanical drive. My computer was so slow and clunky. Once I upgraded to an SSD, my PC booted up within 30 seconds and it was ready to go. My games load really quickly. I don't have any slowdowns. Everything's really fast and responsive. It is just awesome. And even better, it has never been a better time to buy an SSD because they are getting dramatically cheaper. So. You can always add a mass storage drive in the future. In fact, I recommend you do. You can get a, a one terabyte drive from Seagate for like 25 bucks. It's really, really cheap. So if you really want the extra storage, what I'd recommend you do is use this drive for your operating system, your drivers, and your main games. You can put everything else on a mass storage drive and you'll have optimal performance. In fact, you might only be going 10 to $20 over budget by adding the second drive. I just didn't want to do it because I wanted to keep this under a $400 budget. So yeah, you're going to be, this This build totals $387.90 before mail and rebates. So you could probably fit a mechanical drive in here without even going over budget. But I don't like to include mail and rebates in my videos. I like to make sure that the base price is below budget. That brings us to the power supply. When, when you're on a budget like this, you really don't need anything fancy or anything crazy. So I went for the EVGA 500 watt 80 plus certified ATX power supply. What you do need from your power supply, however, is reliability. And that's why I went for a reputable company like EVGA, because if you go for the cheapest power supply you can find, which seems like a viable option at first, because then you can allocate more money towards a CPU or a GPU or RAM or whatever. If you get a crappy power supply, it has a potential of short fusing your entire system and you're gonna be screwed. All your components will be lost and it's not worth it. I've done that before and my friends have done that before. So it's better to go for a power supply that is reliable, but not super expensive. So this power supply does balance affordability and reliability, which is really, really awesome. It has six SATA connectors and three Molex 4-pin connectors for any fans that you have. Uh, and it has two PCI 6 plus 2-pin connectors, so you can add it to a uh, power on a graphics card if you choose to add one later on down the line. Again, I wanted to make this build really future-proof so you can add more stuff later on. Unfortunately, it is not modular, but our case does have a power supply shroud, which is going to make your life way easier, and cable management with this case is a breeze. It's the Cougar MX330 ATX Mid Tower case. This guy is pretty awesome. It's less than 50 bucks, and you're going to get an absolute steal because it's very sturdy. It has a side panel window. Although it is acrylic and not tempered glass, any side panel is better than nothing at this price point. The power supply shroud is going to help with cooling as well as cable management. It's going to make your build look a lot cleaner overall, even though you have a non-modular power supply. The case is a ventilated front panel so you can mount some case fans there. There is a re included rear exhaust fan and a top panel where you can mount case fans as well. This case can also fit two three and a half inch drives, two internal two and a half inch drives, and a five and a quarter inch drive as well. And it can fit a maximum video card of 350 millimeters. So overall this bad boy is good to go and it's going to get everything you need done for a really really cheap price i'm really surprised by how cheap this case is that's going to bring our build to a close though you're getting a 400 dollars gaming pc that can handle games like dota counter strike um overwatch and some other games as well with really really good frame rates considering the price some games you're going to have to turn down your settings just a bit to lower medium but you have to understand at this budget that your expectations can't be maxing out AAA titles and getting 100 FPS. That's just not realistic on a low budget. However, if you're okay with turning down your settings and still being able to play some awesome games, this build is the best bang for your PC gaming buck in March of 2020 and going forward. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought down below in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks. Peace.